This world's kind of messed up. And this administration today, here and now, declares unconditional war on poverty in America. This is just a few of hundreds of books and just different products from behavior analysis trying to reform education. But let's be honest, like if anything, what the field has actually experienced as a result of any of the work that we've done there is something akin to that. Today on the Daily BA, is there hope for behavior analysis in education? child I know you're hurt and you can't let go it's not your fault and you don't deserve all the bad in the hurt all right so there's typically two sides to this either behavior analysis is going to save the world or we are totally I didn't say it it was just the quack it's okay Nelson Mandela was one that said that education is the most powerful weapon that we have to change the world. The problem for behavior analysts is that we're not communicating it effectively or we have it historically. And I know that the system is just all messed up backwards to all get out, but I think we need to take ownership of how we approach the situation because that is in our control. We'll get to that later though. First, I want to talk about behavior analysis being synonymous with ABA therapy and treatments for autism. This is how it is known in the general public and how many people know us, but we actually have a really extensive history when it comes to education. I want to talk specifically about a project called Project Follow Through, which is one of the most uplifting and cool projects ever to learn about behavior analysis, but it's also one of the like saddest ones when it comes to the outcomes and what was actually uh, discovered from it, I would say. So first, an excerpt. Follow Through was the largest and most expensive experimental project in education funded by the U.S. federal government that has ever been conducted. And just so you know, this started back in 1967 with Lyndon B. Johnson. Urge this Congress and all Americans to join with me in that effort. Fast forward to 1995 at the end of this whole thing, and there was over a billion dollars put in this study. A billion. The largest educational project ever. Follow through was originally intended to be an extension of the federal Head Start program, which delivered educational health and social services to typically disadvantaged preschool children and their families. The function of follow through, therefore, was to provide a continuation of these services to students in their early elementary years. To put a little more parameters, a little more context on this, 178 different communities were selected and 22 different models of instruction were included and evaluated in Project Follow Through. Fun tidbit for you, parents in the community were actually a part of selecting what was going to be implemented in their school district. I'm not so sure that that happens these days. So you can read about that, I've linked it below, I'm gonna describe more of that soon. But the question is, where are we today? Well, I think some old folks are just bitter as hell as where it's gone. Uh, you can look on Zig's site himself if you go to the Wayback Machine, which is a service where you can go back and look at his site over different periods of time. And you can see just how sad and down he was about the state of the educational system. I mean, hell, he was writing books about it literally titled War Against the School's Academic Child Abuse. Those are some strong words. But some young folks like myself have a fire under their butt and lit to try to make a different world and actually pursue this educational reform. And there's been a lot of educational reform in the sense of legislation that's passed the right to effective education. And these things are great, but they're not always working as they were intended. Most of the time as behavior analysts, what this means is that you are out there putting out fires, you're trying to make sure that there's not uh, processes that are leading to litigation or cases that lead to litigation. Essentially, it's a failure model. Until they're failing, we're not going to put any more resources and time there. I used to do some of this work myself. I no longer can, I'm, I got beat up by the system. Like it's just, it's too much for me and not what I particularly want to do, which is things I'm gonna be sharing over time on this channel. Now that's not to say that people don't make respectful gains in this in their areas. There are people out there, if you're one of them, please comment down below because then what we can do is we can slowly build a bigger community and awareness of what you're doing. So please tell people what you're doing down below. 
But one old gentleman actually suggested that we do things differently. This was Ogden Lindsley. Ogden was really interested. Founder of Precision Teaching. I'm gonna do more videos on him later about all that. Really entrepreneurial. Um, and he pushed people to go private, which I think for today's age is a good suggestion and a place that you can go to actually move forward and try to create some sort of reform in your area. There's a lot of success that certain models have experienced as a result of going into this private world. So they move out of public education into private. We'll do a whole other video on that another time with the problems with those, um, but it is one area that you could pursue as a young behavior analyst. It seems like the best way to scale up in today's climate. So back to follow through really quick. Uh, Engelman was the author of, I don't know, many of these different books. He's the founder of Direct Instruction. If you're actually interested in how to go about creating direct instruction and sort of materials, there's books on that. He's been fantastic for a resource on effective education. Largely direct instruction that he and everybody else was responsible for making was winning out on, across the board. So what's the lesson then? What can we learn as behavior analysts? Well, I think first of all, the one that seems simple but isn't always really coming across for people is proof doesn't actually matter. If you don't have the leverage, which we don't in these situations, using our own value system of saying this is what is working isn't going to work. You have to put your content, your proof and such in ways that they value. That is, you have to speak to their values and what constitutes as truth to the people that you are trying to influence. Now, if you don't believe me about this, there are books up here on the shelves that, that talk about this in a behavioral framework, but that's for another video. But let's be realistic. You also have to be great at politics. That is how this game goes. It's kind of ironic and sad that the very field of motivation and learning ended up getting pigeonholed. In this film, you'll see the end product of some of our efforts. This world's kind of messed up. Oh, well, what did I say? Oh, oh, 30. Okay, I lost my head. Well, when Kathy Watkins has like a summary book that's really cool on this, I'm gonna link it down below. I recently gave it away, so I couldn't really talk about it and reference it here. So please forgive me, Kathy, if you've seen this. Zig, you are a hero to so many. It's not fair. You did your time. How much longer will you suffer in this life? Don't give up Just hold on tight